Hi, Kevin here. Welcome back to the kitchen. For dinner tonight, we're fixing braised cube steaks and vegetables. So what I have here is one and a half pounds of cube steak. And cube steak is a tough cut of meat that has been run through a mechanical tenderizer. The tenderizer makes these little cube-shaped indentations. That's why it's called cube steak. Now first, season the steaks with salt. I'm using kosher salt. And some grinds of black pepper. And then, flour the steaks. And if you can't have regular all-purpose flour, you could use a gluten-free substitute. I've read that quinoa flour works very well for cube steaks. Yeah, this is one of my favorite childhood dishes. It was probably one of my parents' favorite dishes too when they were kids because cube steak has been around since the 1930s. And what you do is press the flour into the steaks. And the flour is going to give the steaks a nice crust. It's also going to make the gravy. And you want to flour both sides. Press it in so it really adheres to the steaks. And I should mention, beware your source of cube steaks. I bought some cube steaks from Walmart once, and they were not properly cubed. I don't know what they did to the steaks, but they would not become tender after they were braised. But these steaks will become super tender after they braise for one hour. Okay, now we're going to move over to the stove. All right, I'm going to brown the steaks in this large braising skillet, which comes with a lid. You could use any large skillet with a lid. And I have, oh, about two tablespoons of vegetable oil in the skillet. In they go. To make sure I have room for all four of these steaks. Yes, I think I can manage this. There we go. Okay, I'm going to brown these on both sides and then we'll come back. All right, while the steaks are browning, we might as well go ahead and make the braising liquid. So what you want is one and three-fourths cup of water and about a quarter cup of Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire sauce was invented in 1835 by John Lee and William Perrins. So it's been around for a really long time. It was invented in England and it was available in this country by 1839. So that's one and three-fourths cup of water and about a quarter cup of the Worcestershire sauce. So you want two cups of liquid in total. And the Worcestershire is going to give this uh, dinner a glorious perfume. All right, the steaks are nicely browned, so now add the braising liquid. And then, if you want a thick rather than a thin gravy, you can add a little more flour. I'm going to add, oh, about two tablespoons of flour. And by the way, if you're on the keto diet, you can omit the flour entirely. The dish won't be nearly as good, but at least you'll be able to eat it. Then, you want to deglaze the skillet. Just stir up. I'm going to grab my pot holder here. Just 
stir up the bits of meat and flour that have stuck to the bottom of the pan. Because those bits are loaded with flavor. Put the lid on. And then I'm going to put this in a preheated 350 degree oven until the meat is fork tender. That's going to take one hour, so we'll come back. Guess what? I'm back. I forgot to add the vegetables. I'm going to add some baby red potatoes. Again, if you're on the keto diet, skip the potatoes. And then I'm going to add some sliced onion and some roughly chopped carrot. It's about four carrots and three medium-sized onions. Now we can put the lid on. And then this goes into the oven again for one hour. When I was a little kid, my mother made cube steak. She just pan fried it. And it was truly horrible. The meat was so tough that you had to use a serrated knife to cut through it. So I really did not like it. So the secret for super tender cube steak is that you have to braise the meat, just as we did today. And when this dinner is ready, I'm going to show you just how tender the steaks are. The braised cube steak dinner is out of the oven. Let's have a look. Oh, very colorful. So the potatoes are tender. The carrots are tender. Of course, the onions are tender. And look at this cube steak. It's so tender, it's practically falling apart. I'm going to plate this up, and then I'll be right back. Here it is on the plate. Let's have a taste. Now, look at this. So tender. A bite. Fabulous, as always. You guys, I hope you will try this braised cube steak dinner someday. The meat, the gravy, the vegetables, they're all infused with the beautiful aroma of the Worcestershire sauce. And it's such an inexpensive meal to make. So please give it a try. I'm going to call this 1930s braised cube steak dinner because it was in the 1930s that cube steak became readily available in American markets. Okay, and of course people braised it just as we did today. All right, I will see you very soon. Give this a try. Thanks so much for watching. Bye for now.